The Republican National Committee opened their debate last week with a clip of Oliver Anthony's viral song, Rich Men North of Richmond. The song never really struck Russell or myself as a particularly right-wing song. We've been into, we've been over this a million times, so I won't labor, I won't, uh, you know, really hammer on this point too much. Um, but the contradiction there between starting off saying, you know, selling my soul, working all day, overtime hours for bullshit pay, and then, you know, taking out some of those resentments on people who he sees as gaming the welfare system. Those are resentments and anxieties and certain contradictions, I would argue, that are very, very common amongst ordinary people who are struggling right. to get by. Right. Yep. So that doesn't make you right wing. doesn't necessarily make you left wing either. He describes himself as neither. And he actually took to social media to take issue with the fact that the Republicans used his song in their debate, saying pretty much the song was written about the people on the debate stage. So here's a brief piece from a video he posted in response to them featuring his song. Like, it's aggravating seeing people on conservative news try to identify with me like I'm one of them. It's aggravating seeing certain musicians and politicians act like we're buddies and, and act like we're fighting the same struggle here, like that we're trying to present the same message. Uh, you know, I've... I've had a lot of people reach out to me and I've tried to be polite to everybody and um, I've talked to hundreds of people the last two weeks. But it seems like certain people want to just ride the attention of this song to maybe make them their own selves relevant and that's aggravating as hell. The other thing that I find aggravating is, uh, well, you know, like, it was funny seeing my song in the, it was, fun, it was funny seeing it at the presidential debate. Because it's like, I wrote that song about those people, you know? So for them to have to sit there and listen to that, uh, that cracks me up. <laughs> uh, but it was funny kind of seeing the response to it. Like, that song has nothing to do with Joe Biden, you know? It's a lot bigger than Joe Biden. Um, that song is written about the people on, the, on that stage. And a lot more, too. Not just them, but, but definitely them. And that comes through pretty clearly in the song. That's one of the reasons why, for all its faults, yes, we don't have to go through it a million times, I like the song. And I thought it was great that the song sort of blew up in the way that it did. So you saw there a pretty direct repudiation of the Republican Party sort of opportunistically trying to seize upon that song and claim it for themselves. And what you saw now in some conservative media is some conservatives who tried to claim Oliver Anthony are now shunning Oliver Anthony. Russell has an article that he'll share in a moment, but I want to share this tweet first here from Stu Peters. Oliver Anthony is fake, and rich men north of Richmond is a psyop. See, he sounds like us now. Is a psyop written by the CIA, same as Toby Keith and courtesy of the red, white, and blue. He's referring to this clip where he praises diversity. So let's just play this. This is only 13 seconds. I mean, we are the melting pot of the world, and that, that's what makes us strong is our diversity, and we need to learn to harness that and appreciate it and not use it as a political tool to, to keep everyone separate from each other, you know? Yeah, so that mm -hmm. was forget it. He's gone woke, <laughs> you know. That's that. He's, he's gone a woke. woke. He's a wokester now. Yeah, so they they want to disown him now. And look, they are the mirror image of a lot of the libs in a lot of ways. And this speaks to the failing of our politics more broadly. When a guy like Oliver Anthony surfaces, there was a tendency by the right to want to claim him, and there was a tendency on the left to try and shun him. And yep. now that he's spoken out against racism, I guess that was too much for certain conservatives, <laughs> and spoken out against the Republican Party, that was too much for certain conservatives. Now a lot on the right are trying to shun him. The left, mm -hmm. though, still doesn't want to claim him because he's not with their entire program, apparently. The right response when a song like this catches fire is to neither claim him for yourself or disown him. The right response is to engage with him. Because what I saw when this song first surfaced was an ordinary person. I saw the, this guy as the reason why Donald Trump won. Because too many people exactly like Oliver Anthony in too many states felt too screwed over by really the two-party system more broadly. Mm -hmm. But especially mm -hmm. the establishment 
wings of the Republican and Democratic parties. And since the Republicans put an anti-establishment insurgent on offer in 2016 and the Democrats didn't, all those Oliver Anthony types flocked to Trump. Now, I'm not saying Oliver Anthony himself voted for Trump. I don't know that. I can't say that. But what I'm saying is when I saw Oliver Anthony, I saw the kind of person who is critical, critical to win over into a genuine, diverse, working class movement. And what I saw in the song was an openness to that message, not total agreement on day one. But what is so fucking wrong with the left and the right, apparently, that if you don't have total agreement on day one, <laughs> your reaction is to disown the person. That's the opposite of engagement. That's the opposite of politics. That's anti-politics. You're not doing politics if you're doing that, right? And a lot of people online are in engaged in this sort of constant culture of gamesmanship and one-upsmanship and owning other people and, you know, and look, I'd be lying if I said I didn't engage in that from time to time. I think we all have. We're all pretty online people here. But there are times when you have to break out of that. There are times when you have to check yourself and say, okay, yes, the guy has contradictory views. Yes, the guy is a mixed bag. That's all the more reason to engage. So on the flip side of Stu Peters, and we'll get to the article in a moment, but since you mentioned Kyle Kalinske earlier, I thought of this tweet. I wasn't planning on sharing this. He puts up his take. Rich man north of Richmond, dude. I responded went from, to this. Oh, you did? Interesting. I, I, I didn't know that. Rich man north of Richmond, dude, went from I hate elites to fuck welfare recipients to I hate these Republicans to, as Reagan says, big government is the problem, all in the span of like a week. Bottom line is he's confused and incoherent, and it's obvious. Okay. Pot, meat, kettle. Well, yeah. you... <laughs> Are talking about political incoherence? <laughs> did you not see the video last week the Turncoat Dan did and Jimmy Dore did a segment on of you fighting yourself? Well, yeah, um, that's 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 an interesting point. I didn't take that angle. I didn't think of that. But that is an interesting point now that you mention it. On a Being daily basis, you are misleading your fucking viewers about your fucking half-ass guru candidate joke of a candidate book tour candidate and you're talking about political incoherence mr movement shut the fuck up well first of all let's say he is incoherent let's say he is confused and incoherent that confusion that incoherence well, those inconsistencies yeah. are very very common amongst ordinary people most ordinary people have mixed views they're not easily definable as left wing and right wing so you can trash them as being confused and incoherent and therefore what Okay, so if a guy has a certain class consciousness, a certain anti-elite consciousness, a certain desire for the empowerment and betterment of ordinary people through things like higher wages, which he pretty explicitly advocates for in the song, um, then if, if you see that he's coming from that place, why let the inconsistencies <clears throat> in his views or the incoherence or the confusion in his views – why let why why turn off in response to that? Why well, not engage that person? Well, that's how you that's how you do politics is when you see right. a person who's maybe is coming from a genuine place but is a bit confused and has views that are a bit inconsistent with each other, the thing to do is engage that person and persuade that person. Not just mm -hmm. fire off a tweet. Well, this guy's a confused, incoherent idiot. Send done. Right. That's well, not you're not you're not serious at that point. You're just not. That's why I dwell on this song a little bit, because people say, oh, this is culture war. No, this song is not culture war. That's the whole point. The libs and now the conservatives, to a large extent, are making this into a culture war issue because they don't have the courage to face an right. ordinary person right. with inconsistent views. So they're making it a culture war thing. The libs are upset because he's got a messy beard and he lives in the woods and he doesn't signal to their sensibilities. And the right are butthurt now because... They thought he was one of them, and it turns out he's more complicated than that. I love you, but you are not <laughs> serious people. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, look, I'm not going to lie, man. I got, when I was living in Chicago after college, I got cast in Tony and Tina's wedding because it's, it's not much of a stretch for me to play like a, you know, working class Italian kind of yeah, thing no, that I they wanted. Yeah. And uh, so I got cast. And, you know, it was kind of like my nightmare in hell in a lot of ways. It was almost like, um, you know, it was almost like a script about 
being put in a position where what you thought you wanted is a is a betrayal of everything you're about because what do you think tony and tina's wedding really is it's making fun of the kind of people i grew up with for the amusement of rich people from lakeshore drive um when i saw a lot of the left reaction to oliver anthony that's the kind of thing that's going to make me end up doing a why i left the left fucking video because that shit triggers me like almost nothing else. Because you can say it's about the welfare line. No, it is no, it's not. not. No. no, it's not. You don't like his signaling. You don't like the beard. You don't like the folksy thing. You don't like the references to God. And, and we'll get into that in the Tucker segment. You don't like his cultural style. And you justify that dislike backward from there. It is very much what Glenn Greenwald said. The left is the movement that tries to make itself smaller. Exactly. That, that, that's it. You're, you, every, everybody's competing for brownie points. And knowing as much as I do, because I'm kind of fascinated by the period of um, revolutionary movements of the 60s and the 70s, I'm not going to blame it entirely on social media. The left has always had this tendency towards this kind of aimless doctrinaire factionalism. I mean, the, the left has always kind of famously been incapable of getting its shit together around a common goal and message. Uh, it's a big part right. of, the, of the eternal advantage that the right often has in a knockdown, drag-out brawl with the left that they're much more able to set aside differences of doctrine and focus on a goal than the left is but i will say social media has not fucking helped at all no certainly not no and that, it, right it ele look the algorithm elevates conflict and that means that people who like to virtue signal and like to pick fights are elevated in social media so people are trained to behave that way even if they might not even necessarily be inclined to behave that way so that's who you see that's who you hear from you hear all the jerks who say rich men north of richmond well clearly clearly he's you know referring to uh slave owners yeah, yeah. you know yeah, clearly say i mean obviously that's what he means you know <laughs> yeah, clearly yeah. this is a confederate song so yeah. that look even a lot of people who consider themselves not democrats leftists man they're mostly not working class people themselves they're not comfortable with working class people they don't really like working class people and in the end they share the same prejudices as their lib parents and when you see how they reacted to this guy not all of them a lot of them did it, it just reminds you the apple doesn't fall far from the tree man your fucking parents are probably msnbc watchers you think you're some kind of a fucking half-ass marxist socialist but in the end you share their prejudices you you just dress it up with a with a little a little more uh you know material di dialectics um you want to say something yeah i was just gonna say at this point oliver anthony has spoken numerous times to try and clarify that he's not a right-wing zealot. He even posted to his Instagram the picture of the fudge round right, explaining right. that you got into that with uh, Tusker on the show that I missed. But um, So between that and then him telling Fox News, no, actually, you know, giving them the diversity is our strength line, you're right. And now this, where he's saying, hey, you know, it's a little frustrating that Rep the Republicans used my song because I wrote that song about them. Those people on the stage were the subject of the song, which think about the integrity it takes to say that. I mean, the right, guy right. is clearly a guy who's, you know, having a little bit of a hard time getting by. We, we read in his bio, right? He bought this land that he still owes $60,000. He lives in a camper on the land off the grid. With a, um, with a freaking tarp over it. With a tarp over it. I mean, this let, guy. Let, let me see some of these cosplaying Twitter motherfuckers in that position turn down a record deal. Turn let, me see, you, let me see you do that. Let me see or you do that. Or trash the the political party that puts him on front and right. center at their debate, which got you know millions and millions of views. Right? Show me one of these guys is going to put the thumb in the eye of the people who are featuring him. Right? Because right. it is true, conservative media kind of made that song viral. They made that song viral, and then he just puts out a social media post. You know, it's kind of frustrating that the song's been 
sort of used for those ends in that way. You know, right, I think it right. takes a certain integrity to to say that. And you know what? It takes a certain kind of genius to take a guy who has caught fire like this and do everything you can to alienate him. <laughs> right, that exactly. is that takes a special kind of political skill to see that as the proper course of action. That's like all the <laughs> all the people who thought that uh, Bernie should like AOC, that font of political wisdom, who thought that Bernie should disavow the Joe Rogan endorsement, right. which in the, he in his wisdom did. Right, right. F fucking people. All right, so I see my Queens is coming out now. Yeah. Mr. Anthony's song, Rich Men North of Richmond, a reference to politicians living in Washington, D.C., became a viral hit among conservative audiences last week. After right-wing commentators on social media praised it for its raw and real messaging, they seem to have turned on Mr. Anthony after a video emerged showing his, quote, real accent is not a twangy Appalachian one. Okay, idiots. Idiots. This is like getting mad at Mick Jagger right. because he doesn't genuinely have a kind of bluesy American accent. Right. It's a fucking style, idiots. It's right. a when style. Walk, it's a singing style. You walk up to Bob Dylan. Hey, how's it going? Hey, you know, that's not yeah. how he talks. He talks <laughs> right. like a person. <laughs> talks like a normal person. <laughs> right. Because he's not like, well, but god damn. <laughs> oh, so now he now he's a phony. <laughs> he doesn't fucking talk like Yosemite Sam. Yeah. Um, infuriating conservatives even further is the fact that Mr. Anthony also praised diversity as the U.S.'s main strength. During a Fox News interview, Mr. Anthony, who grew up in North Carolina, speaks with what sounds like a typical American accent. Oh, the horror. And by the way, listening to that video, man, he he has an accent from down there. It's just not a thick one. He does have an accent. He doesn't have a standard American accent. Um, uh, it's very, very common to exaggerate accents in song and, and song right Especially but country I'm, music right? i'm saying even the claim that he's speaking right. standard american only fucking on, only people on cable news speak standard american <laughs> right right yeah, exactly, all right like right. nobody everyone has a little bit of a regional accent i have one you have one most people have some kind of an accent uh and he definitely has one that if you listen to him you'd assume somewhere down south it's just not a thick one um I mean, we are the melting pot of the world, Mr. Anthony told the interviewer in the video, and that's what makes us strong is our diversity, and we need to learn to harness that and appreciate it and not use it as a political tool and keep everyone separate from each other, you know? You know, I just wish he wouldn't support white supremacy that way. Right. You know, yeah, because know. he really, you know, right when we want to get behind him as a class warrior, he right. clearly reveals his true colors as a white supremacist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, an ex-user whose pinned tweet has links to videos praising the leader of the American Nazi Party <laughs> called Mr. Anthony. They must really dig into these people to find something. Uh, called Mr. Anthony an algorithm-boosted, based red beard, hillbilly <laughs> song guy. <laughs> Who <laughs> was faking his accent? <laughs> All right. I mean, that, you know, I mean, that's a little lingu more linguistically inventive than anything yeah, I saw. Yeah, at least you get the little left. style points for that. Yeah. Definitely style points. Um, the user also took offense to the fact the singer said that diversity is our strength. And they were not the only one lashing out at Mr. Anthony. One user said he was trying to, quote, become a rich man north of Richmond, while another came to a conclusion that many of Mr. Anthony's left-wing critics already voiced, that he was an industry plant meant to enrapture Republican consumers starving for conservative media. They're starving for conservative media? This is like, this is like a golden age of conservative media. There's so much of it on alternative platforms. You, you actually have an answer to The Onion now, which you never had before. Right. Um, and, you know, he's he's going about it in a pretty funny way, going up there and saying he's not speaking for Republicans. But okay. So that's basically the upshot of it. Um, so now what he was getting from the left, now he's getting from the right. If you have any any political sense whatsoever, you, what you would see when you look at Oliver Anthony is a fucking opportunity. That is a right. great opportunity. You want to talk to this guy. You want to win him over to your cause. And listen, 
obviously for most people, because now through a quirk of fate, this guy became super famous. You're not going to get to talk to him. But if you reacted to him with a viscerally negative reaction, I, I have a question for you. How do you expect to organize workers? Who do you think workers are? Do you right. think they're like the people in your dorm room from college? Because I promise you they're not. They're not. No. Maybe you should go talk to some. Because it's very obvious from the reaction that a lot of so-called leftists had to this guy that they've never that the working class is purely theoretical to them. Oh, of they course. Actually the people in the dorm room went any. to college so they wouldn't be one of these guys. That's the whole point. Right? That's Because they didn't want that life. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, I... Uh, a absolutely, absolutely, and he's he is going to appear on the mid the Midwestern Mark show on I I think, September sixth, which, which is, is going to be fascinating. Yeah, I that's think going to be great. Think, now, look, do you think uh, a right wing, a doctrinaire right wing conservative guy would take an interview with Midwestern Marks? You know how many hundreds, if not thousands, of interview requests he has had, including since one this song from us. surfaced, including one from us, uh, and he chooses amongst a few Midwestern Marks. So. Yeah, that'll be great. I'm looking forward to watching that. Uh, yeah, so so this is what I'm going to say. I know I, I, there are probably some people in our audience, and definitely some people are going to watch the clip of this who are among those that uh, attacked this guy. So let's put that behind us. And let me submit to you and suggest to you that in the end, why don't you go forward in a different way and try to reevaluate how you react to people like this, because I promise you, uh, you know, whatever decent work he might do every now and then, you're not going to build any kind of meaningful movement with Nathan Robinson's at all. Right. Exactly. Okay. That that's not who you're going to. You're going to need those. Of course. People. Yeah. You're going to need people like Hobbies. this. And you know what? People like this are like most of us. They have complicated politics. And they right. don't necessarily have it all figured out. That's an opportunity to have a conversation. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a guy like this who's questioning and searching? Or would you rather have somebody who's deeply conservative and has their mind made up and feels like they have it all figured out? How are you gonna how are you gonna persuade that person? This is somebody who you could actually talk to. In other words, uh, basically I'm saying the knee-jerk reaction that a lot of the left had to this guy in this song it's a teachable moment other things right. like this will come up in the future do it better reconsider don't go for the easy virtue signal if you're actually trying to build a long-term movement for the working class that presumably would need to include the fucking working class <laughs> right, exactly right exactly exactly please clap